everyone. Welcome to the biggest show in the history of Metroplex Wrestling. This is MPX's Destiny, Cody Cox, alongside Tyler Foster. I cannot tell you how excited we are to be here with you, coming from the epic in Grand Prairie, Texas, Tyler, for this magnificent, huge, biggest show ever. Now, Cody, we've been waiting anticipation for months and months and months. It's finally here. Today is the day. It's Destiny. And we are kicking things off with something that could be not just the match of the night, maybe the match of the year for MPX, the ultimate finesse, or Chris Bay, who MPX addicts are no stranger to. We've seen Chris Bay several times before, including this very show last year, getting set to go one-on-one -on -one with the final boss himself, Exodus Prime. But I can't think of a better way to start this night off than with a match like this. And that Chris Bay, you mentioned part of Destiny last year, taking on someone we're going to see in our main event tonight, the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle. But tonight, he's got a much different challenge, making his way to the ring right now in the form of the final boss, Exodus Prime. It is a sold-out crowd here at the Epic in Grand Prairie. We've been anticipating this for months. It is finally here. But I can guarantee you every single individual on this show has been anticipating this just as we have, just as all of you have for so long. The time's finally arrived and I am ready to get this thing going. You mentioned that main event, MPX title will be on the line. The Texas Rumble winner, the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle. Set to score off against the MPX champion, the Tommy Becker. That is our main event here tonight. Right now we're going to send it back up to the ring with our ring announcer for this evening, Matt Andrews. Exodus Prime and Chris Bay. Two of the most athletic individuals you ever you are ever going to see in an MPX ring set to go one on one here tonight. And with two styles that should complement each other very well. It's going to be interesting to see who gets the upper hand here. Very comparable athletically. Exodus Prime and Chris Bay. Exodus Prime, of course, a former MPX champion. Chris Bay, former tag team champion, former X Division champion. And here are the addicts, they're solidly, beh solidly behind the final boss. Murphy Travis Trueborn calls for the bell, and our opening contest at Destiny is underway. And you heard the addicts with the Exodus Prime chance early on, almost like a road game here for Chris Bay. Coming in to MPX territory, taking on a former Addicts and MPX champion in Exodus Prime, but quickly Bay backing him into the corner. Clean break from the ultimate finesser. Huge shout out and thank you again to the Epic here in Grand Prairie for having us here for our very first MPX event here at the Epic. Got to meet a lot of the uh, the members of the Chamber of Commerce, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor, Mayor Perry, running around here at the Epic today as well. And another somewhat clean break from Chris Bay. Well, let's see how long these clean breaks last in this one. Okay, these two ultra competitive individuals. We've got all sorts of stars here in action at Destiny Night. Of course, we're going to see. Trey Miguel one on one with Tata Manning. Tata Manning, of course, called his shot, and he's got Trey Miguel later on tonight. Trey Miguel's tag team partner, usually a member of the Rascals, Zachary Wentz, is here in action in a triple threat match against Kari Wright, and we still don't know who the mystery opponent is. Oh, yeah, PX management turning that into a triple threat here last week. Yeah, they gave us that clue to listen to Kari Wright's entrance music. I'm still not. Not completely sure who exactly is going to join Wentz. I mean, there's been, right in that match. there's been speculations all week long. It's Chris Bates slapping the taste out of the mouth of Exodus Prime. I think the sportsmanship, it was only going to last so long. And Chris Bay may have just thrown it out the window. 
And now Bay up and over. And you see the speed and the agility of the old school finessers taking the legs out from under Exodus. Double stomp to the back. Exodus drive face first into the mat. Now backing the corner again is Chris Bay. Charge again. Across the chest of Exodus. The knife edge chop from the ultimate finesser, Chris Bay. Again sitting, no, trying to send Prime into the corner. Prime reversing. And Chris Bay with another knife edge chop to Exodus Prime. Snapmare out of the corner. And then leaping European uppercut right to the back lateral press. Only a one count. Exodus Prime. Trying to find a way back to his feet. Chris Bay helps him up, but just could flick more damage to the final boss again. Knife edge chops, sending Prime back to the corner. One for a second time miss. Prime misses with the chop, and now Bay connects with his. You hear Chris Bay saying that he's faster than Exodus. Nice reversal, Prime. Basin in. Prime's not going to take that very well. Right into oh. the atomic drop. An unfortunate landing for Chris Bay, right across the knee of the final boss. And that snapback suplex from Prime. His base low to his feet in the corner. Exodus charging in. Connects with the knee to the face. Now Prime perched up on that second turnbuckle. Leaping European uppercut takes down the ultimate finesser. Cover for Prime. Again, only a two count. Only able to keep Bay down for two was the final boss, but landing perfectly off the second rope. And can Exodus Prime follow it up? He's got Chris Bay right where he wants him. Well, in both these, I think this is a great matchup, Teller, but both of these guys very evenly matched. They both use a lot of the same offense. We've already seen both of them using uppercuts. They both like that springboard stunner. Of course, Exodus Prime calling his the mass Exodus. It'll be interesting to see who, if anyone, hits that move here tonight. Chris Bay, the springboard stunner for him, the art of finesse. Moves that both men like to utilize. Could one of them use it to finish their opponent off here? And Prime up and over, drops the leg across the back of Bay's head. And Prime hurrying in for the cover. Again, only able to keep the ultimate finesser down for two. Of course, we mentioned Zachary Wentz, Trey Miguel are here. Of course, Fuego Del Sol making his return to MPX for the first time in little over five years. He will be in that Triple Threat Addicts title match along with Demo Diamond and the Addicts champion, Mikey B. It's been a long time for Fuego Del Sol, and he has a chance to leave Destiny with gold around his waist tonight. Four title matches here tonight. Women's title will be on the line. Hilda challenges Erica Torres for the second time. As Bay brings prime across that rain apron and striking him with those knees and his repeated knees and it's hard to tell from my vantage point the knees were either striking the bottom of the chin or perhaps even the throat of Exodus as Bay pulling that knee pad down and dropping it right across the back and Exodus Prime tumbling to the outside I think it's going from bad to worse there for Exodus Prime now Chris Bay in full control of the final boss. Chris Bay calling our, our cameraman, Ross Destiny. Ward, over. Looking right at the kick. camera. By the ultimate finesser, your girl's favorite wrestler, Chris Bay. Wrestling fans know Chris Bay, longtime member of the Bullet Club. No lack of ego on any member of the Bullet Club, but especially Chris Bay here tonight. Just very recently, Chris Bay. Had quite the successful tag team run along with Ace Austin but in singles action here tonight. And a stiff kick to the chest of Exodus. You heard the thud. And it has him draped across that middle rope. Into the neck breaker, bringing him back in the hard way. Chris Bay, a little bit looking for a cover again, hooks the leg. Again, only a two count. So these two giving their best offensive outputs here so far, but neither can keep the other down. And Bay now driving the knee into the back of Exodus. That's been a target of the ultimate finesser for nearly this entire match. As I think it was aggravated. But Exodus probably spilled out onto the floor there a second ago. And Chris Bay taking full advantage now to weaken Exodus Prime, but Prime, he's firing back. 
Pride sends him in. No, there's a reversal. And that forearm smash right to the chest of Exodus. Stops him right in his tracks. And again, you see Chris Bay targeting that back of the spine of the final boss. Yeah, look at these elbow strikes from Chris Bay right across the side of the face of the final boss. As he continues to work on that neck. Here the Attic trying to will Exodus Prime back into this match. Well, Exodus Prime, he's going to need it. He's in a lot of trouble. And he's gotten back to his feet. I have swing and a miss there. Chris oh. Bay maybe looking for a backslide, no? No, maybe a, a, a gory special. And you see the power of Chris Bay coming into play here. It's flexing those arms, pulling the arms of Exodus even further back in the way they weren't meant to bend. Bay. He's holding Exodus Prime up there on his back. Prime doing what he can, trying to find a way out. Oh, Prime into the arm drag. Bay misses the clothesline. Here comes Prime, looking for a wheelbarrow. No, back up, another arm drag takes Bay off his feet. Oh, Exodus Prime trying to get something going here. He's been on the defensive for quite a while here at the hands of Chris Bay. Out of the corner, misses the clothesline. Bay has him hooked. No, Prime counters with a stunner. Well, that might be exactly what Exodus Prime needed. Here he goes for the opposite corner. The leaving European uppercut. Sends Bay the other direction now. Prime charging in again. Backdrop. No, Prime lands on his feet. Blocks the right hand. Nails the kick. Bay tried to block it. Couldn't do so. And down goes the ultimate finesser in perfect positioning for Prime. Springboard helo on Bay. But Exodus Prime has to capitalize. Went to sweep the legs, miss. Psyched him out, sweep the legs that time. But Bay back on his feet, no kick. Face first and goes Bay into the mat. Now Chris Bay was doing a great job of evading Prime, but just driving the top of Bay's head into the mat. Is that going to do it? No. Very close. Chris Bay just able to get that shoulder up. You see referee Travis Trueborn holding up the two. Exodus Prime now going to have to come up with something else to try to keep Chris Bay down. Which anybody who's ever watched Chris Bay knows is not an easy task to accomplish. Well, Prime looking for the contra code here. Yeah, this could do it if Prime can hit that, but no, Bay. Oh, able Superman to punch. Prime's still standing. Now Bay sends him in. No, reversal. No, Bay put the brakes on. Now Prime with the counter. Drives the point of the elbow into the top of Bay's head. Oh, he was looking for the mass exodus. Bay able to push him off. Down across the knee into the gut buster. And Chris Bay only saved himself for the moment. And down across the back. It's Prime. Could be getting closer to winning this match. Yoshi Garoshi into the cover, hooks the inside leg. No, only two. And Bay showing you the kind of resilience he has. You just saw the back of his head bounce off the knee of Exodus Prime. Almost anybody else you got to think would be knocked out, but Chris Bay, and he's still going. And Exodus Prime again has to be getting frustrated. Oh, well, he might be looking for the springboard mass Exodus. Oh, but Bay right there. Chris Bay knew exactly what he was going to do. Well, absolutely. Chris Bay uses that move himself. And now Bay out of the corner. Going for a power bomb. He's got Prime. Oh, no. Counter with Herman Pirata. Hooks the leg. Is that enough? No, only two. And what an opening match we're seeing here now. Bay, he's got the backslide. Shoulders down. And again, only a two count. Oh! Is that enough? Two? No! And Exodus Prime just able to kick out, but Bay immediately staying on the final boss. Brain Buster! Is that going to be enough? Chris Bay looking for the cover. And again, somehow, some way, Exodus Prime keeps getting his shoulder up at the last possible second. And what's it going to take? 
for Chris Bay or Exodus Prime. That's got to be what's going through the mind of Chris Bay right now. He's thrown his best shots at the final boss. And Exodus Prime just keeps coming right back. Bay back to his feet. Prime still on his knees. That stiff kick to the chest. And another kick from the ultimate finesser. Even Exodus Prime, he keeps bouncing back up. He's ready for more, and Chris Bay more than willing to deliver. And Chris Bay can't believe it. And a slap just like he did at the opening mo moments of this contest. And oh. there's a slap back from Exodus. Exodus Prime showing he's not gonna just sit there and take it. And Chris Bay, that series of kicks, finally taking down him. No, Exodus Prime. He's getting back up again, or he's trying to. Oh, Bay was looking for a springboard. Prime landed that uppercut to the back of Bay, sent him to the outside. Watch out for the final ball. Oh. Joe Bay Suicida. And Exodus Prime was just milliseconds away from the art of finesse, but able to counter Chris Bay, and now the final boss has his chance here. And now Prime, he might be looking for that springboard mass exodus again. He's got him set up for it. There he goes. No! Bay, look at Chris Bay! Bay. Oh. Oh. Bay caught him with the springboard! What a counter! Chris Bay won this match! And Tyler, just when it looks like Exodus Prime was about to get the victory with that springboard mass exodus. Chris Bay one-upped him and hit him with his own springboard to get the three count. They talked about early in the match, these two, they both love that springboard cutter. And Chris Bay just showed Exodus Prime the art of finesse. And it's a victory for Chris Bay here to kick things off at Destiny. Addis, we are just getting started. We appreciate everyone being with us no matter where you are in the world. Twitch.tv slash Metroplex Wrestling. And this sold out crowd giving their respect to both Chris Bay and Exodus Prime after an excellent opening contest. There go, Cody. You gotta think that was our first match tonight. That was match one. Match one, you just said again, main event, MBX title on the line, Tommy Becker, Aaron Eagle. Oh, wait a second, look at the show of respect from Bay. And Bay extending the hand, and Exodus Prime. Chris Bay returning it. Just like everyone around the country is learning exactly who the final boss, Exodus Prime, is. It's 
been a long time coming for Fuego Del Sol to be back in an MPX ring. And what better time than tonight at Destiny and a chance to leave the Epic with the MPX Addicts title around his waist.
Mikey yeah, B. Remember, this is a triple threat match, triple threat rules. Mikey could lose this title, Tyler, without being pinned or submitted here tonight. Well, the other problem Mikey B just experienced there, you got to be aware of that other man in the match at all time of all times, Demo Diamond. He slipped in, got the jump on Mikey B. As now the boy band behemoth and the shining truth going back and forth. And Demo has got him up on the shoulders. Oh, Mikey with the elbows back on his feet. You know, we've talked about it, at least I feel like I have the last couple months. What a year it's been, or maybe lack of a year it's been for the TWC. It hasn't been a great year for the TWC. All that could turn around if Demo Diamond is able to walk out of here tonight with that Addicts title. Well, they could turn things completely around tonight. Demo Diamond becoming Addicts champion. Dana Ville, the hardcore Hawaiian Kaimi, taking out Dale Cremosa and, and Legs in that hardcore match. And then Kari Wright later tonight in that triple threat match. But again, he's preparing for an opponent that he doesn't even know yet, along with Zachary oh, Wicks. Flagel back in. And look at the power. Give Demo Diamond credit. <laughs> Holy slam on Flagel. Simone drop with Mikey B. That demo launched Fuego Del Sol, planted Mikey and B. Tyler, could we be looking at the next Atlantic champion right now? Uh, you know, I would put my money on Demo Diamond, especially with what we're looking at here at the moment. He's looking dominant. And again, Demo Diamond has been waiting a long time to get a fair shake at this Addicts Championship. He feels like he was cheated out of it. And it's hard to argue with Polly Paparazzi. Right in front of the referee. No disqualification, of course, in these triple threat matches. Look at Nicholas Caldwell. And over there getting in the face of yeah, Polly Paparazzi. Caldwell wants to call someone else out for cheating, right? He's just upset he didn't get the opportunity to do it first. And Almighty oh charges in, nobody home. A roll up for Demo Diamond. Oh, wait a second. A Caldwell. Come on. Caldwell's trying to put Demo's foot on the ropes for leverage. And now Cedric, referee Cedric Scott was distracted by Big J. There's obviously too much going on here for one referee to handle. They got three guys in the ring, three guys outside of the ring. A lot for one referee to have to control. Oh, Mikey got caught. The demo, they're tying up the legs of the boy band behemoth. What's demo looking for here? Oh, look at the power. It's a suplex, but watch out. Hey, wait a minute, we go to Soul. Fuego almost forgotten about by his two opponents there. Ascended up to that top rope and made sure there was not going to be a three count there without him involved. And now Fuego out of the apron and Demo back to his feet. And Zaguri catches Demo. Super kick right there on the apron. And Demo still on his feet though. Demo Diamond again caught by Fuego Del Sol. Oh, here comes Mikey B back. That right hand to the kidneys. And now the Addicts champion with both of his challengers looking to bring them both back in the hard way. Look at this, he's got Demo in the middle rope, Fuego on the top rope. Double oh. DDTs! Is Mikey going to retain? And a diamond kicks out, and Mikey crawling over, going to cover Fuego. And Fuego okay. kicking out. And just two counts all around for the boy band behemoth. Now Mikey B pointing towards the corner, and now he's going to go up. Demo starting to stir as his Fuego Demo back to his feet. Mikey took way too long going up top. It's Demo Diamond now going up with Mikey B. Will Mikey fight him back? The headbutt from Mikey B. Rock Demo Diamond. But here comes Fuego. Oh, look at this. The assist from Demo. And Fuego using that to take out both of his opponents at one time. Now Fuego looking for a cover on Mikey. Two. And now Fuego, he's got a cover demo. And for Fuego Del Sol, it worked just as it did for Mikey B a second ago, only able to get two counts. Fuego Del Sol would love to leave here as the new Addicts champion in his return to MPX tonight. Hey, Fuego. Oh, he Caldwell back up on the apron. Uh, Fuego was looking for the Tornado DDT. Oh, no, there goes, down goes Caldwell. Hell yeah, Fuego. And now, Fuego. Is it Napoli's up there? Again, Tornado DDT. Fuego Del Sol was looking for it. Oh, he took, he took Holly's hat. A stupid looking hat, right hand to Holly. Watch out for Big J. Big J's right behind Fuego. Oh, oh come on. Come on. 
And the head of security doing his job there, clearing out any threat he could find to Mikey B in his Annex Championship. Again, we know it's no disqualification. Oh, look at Demo Diamond. Just took out Big J. But he took out himself as well over the top rope. That leaves Fuego and the Annex Champion Mikey B in the ring. Both men back up. Mikey charges in. Back draw. Mikey takes out everyone. Then Fuego sending Mikey B up and over. Onto everybody. Now Fuego stands alone. What Fuego Del Sol about to do yeah. what he does best. Oh, okay, that's Polly Paparazzi. Hey, Tom, St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day hands. Oh, what is Fuego doing up there? Oh, I lost that. That's okay. Oh. Oh, screw. Watch off the top. With the St. Patrick's Day hat. Feliz St. Patrick's Day. That smells like it's saying Spanish. Now, Emory, you got all six guys that were in and around ringside all down. And referee Cedric Scott's all that's standing now. Who's going to be able to get back up? Fuego's back to his feet, sending Mikey B back in. And if Fuego capitalizes here, he could leave as the Attic champion with Demo still down on the outside. And this is a chance here for Fuego Del Sol. Oh, well, off the back of Mikey, that double stop to the back of the head. That's it. This new Attic champion Fuego right here. Oh, son oh. of a bitch, come on. Big J and Polly Paparazzi not going to let it happen that easily. But I guess the head of security and the towel boy now have no choice but to, to go get ready for their battle royal later tonight. Well, now they, they've been tossed. Go. Now maybe we can get a fair out of title match. Yeah, get them all out of here. What, what's he throwing out Caldwell too? What did, of what, course. For what? What did he do? He got involved earlier. I mean, what did he do? Well, there's no disqualifications. Well, you got the three competitors. Left Wingo with a big knee to both Mikey and Demo. Yeah, I think Fuego Del Sol would be the end of champion right now if it wasn't for those guys. They just got ejected. Dug on the clothesline. Springboard Monso takes out the champ. And Fuego Del Sol, he's on fire. Two. It's Emo Diamond right there to break up that three count. And setting Fuego down across Mikey B. And now Demo with the cover. Can Demo win the title here now? Uh, Fuego Del Sol able to kick out Demo Diamond. Now turning his focus to the Annex champion, Mikey B. And Demo has Mikey on the shoulders. A demo, a demo might have been looking for that final reign. But Mikey B able to slip away. Now it could be mic drop time. Can he get the mic drop on the big six foot five shot? He truly does. There's mic drop from the Annex champ. Mikey B looking for the cover. Can Mikey retain? No, only two. Fuego breaking up just in time. Now all three men attempting to get back to their feet. Fuego up first. You can see they're, they're all taxed at this point. So much taken out of all of them. But here comes Fuego. Oh, to the Mikey goes to the outside. Fuego stays on the apron. The Fuego. Back on Demo Diamond is back in the ring. And running in, but getting caught by a couple kicks there from Fuego. And Fuego going up top, what are we going to see? Oh, Tornado DDT! Oh. This he, is it! He planted a Fuego Del Sol. Fuego's going to be the new Alex champion now! Uh. Mikey B! Dragging the leg of Fuego, sitting right into the guardrail. And the boy band behemoth in the right place at the right time. I guess Mikey get a rich hey, No! Demo kicks out! And I thought my, Mikey B was going to be able to capitalize there on that Tornado DDT. But Demo Diamond, I guess, had just enough time to be able to kick out. You see Mikey, he wanted that three count badly right there. What an opportunity that was. The Fuego back in already. Fuego not staying down. A kick to the midsection from Del Sol. He's looking for the Tornado. No, no super kick. Mikey with the super kick. Fuego still standing. 
And now Mikey looking for the back drop on Fuego Del Sol. No. Fuego down the back. Super kick on Mikey. This is any Mikey B back into the corner. Here comes Del Sol. Tornado DDT. No. No Mikey. Mike Mike drop. Mike drop. Mike drop from Mikey B. Nicely countered by the Addicts champion. That's got to be it. Mikey B hooking the leg on Fuego Del Sol. Oh, Tim. And Tim will time and break it up the count. Every time when we think someone has got this match in the bag, Tyler. And Demo, just at the last split second, able to break up that three count. Sends Mikey in. Oh. Is that enough to Next do it? spine buster from Demo. Diamond, he got him. Demo's the new Atlantic champion. This match brought to us by Waxing the City and Eulis. As we saw Hilda and Erica Torres go one-on-one. -on -one. Back at the Texas Rumble, of course, Erica Torres came out on top and was victorious. Hilda told me earlier today she feels like she's learned from her mistakes. It feels like if given a second shot like she is getting here tonight, she can get that MPX Women's title away from Erica Torres and become the second ever champion. See if Hilda's strategy is going to be any different from what we saw back at the Texas Rumble. Erica Torres, the MPX Women's Champion, the first and the only MPX Women's Champion in history, making her way to the ring. And so far in this title reign, she's been dominant. Let's see if that continues here tonight at Destiny. It's a beautiful title being held over the head of Erica Torres. Hoping not for the last time. Tyler, I know you're not big fans of either one of these women. Let's just call it how it is. But in your mind, in your impartial opinion, what do you think Hilda has to do tonight to defeat Erica Torres that she didn't do back at the Texas Rumble? Well, I think Hilda learned in the first encounter with Erica Torres at the Rumble that the strength that Erica Torres possesses is something you got to be concerned about. And Hilda, she was not able to stay away from any of the power offense of Erica Torres last time. She's going to have to use her speed to try to stay away, not let Erica Torres ground her in any kind of way because 
Unfortunately for Hilda, Torres also a submission expert. I think the speed and agility of Hilda is what's going to be key for her. No, as you mentioned, we see the leapfrog followed by the arm drag. Hilda looking to have a different strategy here tonight than she had back at the Texas Rumble. But I think if Erica Torres at any point, if she if she gets her clutches on Hilda, it's going to be over, I think, for Hilda. It's going to be back to Scornyville with no championship. Well, we saw these tag titles successfully defended earlier tonight from Tommy Prince and Gabe Wilder. I know they're looking on at a monitor in the back watching their sister Hilda, hoping she can win MPX Gold for the first time here tonight. Now she has been one half of the tag champions, substituting when Tommy Prince was injured, but this will be the first title that Hilda wins if successful. Sure she has successfully defended titles a couple times. That actually won one. Nice German suplex from the women's champion, Torres, with an early cover, only two. Tyler, I said earlier, this is our third title match of the evening. Only one more title match after this. That is the main event later on tonight. Aaron Eagle, one-on-one -on -one with the MPX champion, D. Tommy Becker. Lots of history between those two men. And Aaron Eagle winning the 2024 Texas Rumble, earning this opportunity tonight to challenge D. Tommy Becker for the MPX championship, our main event, coming up later on tonight. Torres charging in, nobody home. And Hilda on the apron. What's she looking for here? Snapping the back of Torres. And now back in. Into that nice tornado DDT. Hilda with that cover. Yeah, I like I like the strategy Hilda's showing. She's going with that stick and move strategy. Trying to stay away. Oh, oh wait there's a second. Torres. Torres got a hold of her. And this is the one thing Hilda's got to be careful. Getting caught in those submissions from Torres, that is what was ultimately her downfall in that first match back at the Texas Rumble. And yeah, this is what you didn't want if you were Hilda, for Erica Torres to get you in a situation like this. Because this match can end very, very quickly. And now Torres being driven back into the corner. section again trying to stay away from Torres oh nobody home there on the big boot attempt from Hilda and Torres just bending Hilda's body in a way it wasn't meant to be bent using those ropes for added leverage and Torres trying to break her challenger in half there across the turnbuckle and now Erica Torres climb out uh, Hilda Hilda make sure Torres was not coming off that top or middle rope Now Hilda looking for a superplex, but Torres holding on to that top rope. Counter, oh my god, just dumping Hilda right on the apron. That was like Hilda hit knee first on the ring apron. And there's a knee right to the face from the MPX Women's Champion. And here's the thing, Tyler, I think a lot of MPX addicts respect Erica Torres. She's gotten nice ovations in every title defense she's had. But let's be honest, the addicts love Hilda. Hilda, perhaps one of the most popular athletes we've ever had in MPX. I mean, it's true. You can't deny that you hear the reaction every week when Hilda walks out there. You heard it tonight again. But let's see if that can translate. You know, oh, right oh. into the knee. It may not now. And Erica Torres hooking the leg. Only able to get two on Hilda. Erica Torres right now in full control of Hilda. As we look out amongst this capacity crowd, we've got standing room only here, Tyler, tonight at the Epic in Grand Prairie, Texas. Again, biggest show in the history of this company. As we're seeing the power on display from the women's champion. But Erica Torres looking to put this one away. Oh, Hilda, unfortunately for her, close enough to get to that bottom rope. Otherwise, I'm not sure if she would have been able to kick out or not. And Erica Torres going right back to the arm. She might be looking for the black oleander. And looking for that submission victory. Again, this is what... Oh, no, Hilda with the counter. That is the move that made Hilda tap out. 
Oh, nice shoulder tackle. And Hilda's going to have to do anything she possibly can to stay out of that. And now, looking for a DDT, but Torres again with the power. Hilda on the apron. Torres charging in. Hilda sidesteps. And now just driving the head of Torres into the apron. And almost in form of a pile driver there, sending Erica Torres' head down into the ring apron. Can she a, capitalize? It's going to be a big chance for Hilda here. She's got a stun. MBX Women's Champion. Meteor from the top. But Torres doing the smart thing. Rolling to the outside, not allowing Hilda to pin her. You see the look on the face of Hilda. Yeah, that's a move Hilda has used to put many opponents away. And Erica Torres, realizing she was in trouble, able to roll out to the floor and save her MPX Women's Championship. Torres back to her feet. Oh, and Hilda going up top. Hilda just leaping off the top rope, taking out Torres. And Hilda not going to give Erica Torres any time to recover out there on the floor. She knows if she's going to win this title, it's got to happen in the ring. Not risking having Erica Torres just take the count out and save her championship. But Hilda only able to get two there. Hilda trying to figure out what else she has to do to take this women's championship off of Torres. Because I guarantee you, Tyler, um, it doesn't matter how much the addicts love Hilda. If Hilda's not successful here tonight, I don't see her being granted a third match from MPX management. At least not any anytime soon, that's for sure. She would have to work her way back up from the bottom. And Erica Torres now caught Hilda up on that top turnbuckle. And she's going up there with her. Maybe looking for a superplex. Oh, Hilda with the headbutt since Torres down, but Hilda spills out to the floor as well. Both women down. Referee Carl Knight out there to check on Hilda, make sure she's okay. And the referee beginning his count. But could you imagine Erica Torres retaining her title here on a count out after Hilda is the one delivering the offensive move? That could be the scenario that we're looking at here. The referee already up to five. Hilda's got to get back up if she wants any shot of staying in this match. She might get counted out, though. Torres back to her feet. And Hilda's not moving. I don't think Hilda's going to be able to answer the nine. here. Uh, just oh. barely. That was ever so close. I didn't think she was going to make it, Tyler. I don't know how she did make it. But now she's right back in with Torres. Hilda, oh, you see the power of Torres. She's got her on the shoulders. Running Samoa and dropped from the women's champion. Not going for a cut. Oh, he's, is, no. Black Oleander. Yeah, she's looking for the Black Oleander. She's going to make Hilda tap out again, just like she did at the Texas Rumble. Hilda very familiar with this. Is Hilda going to tap? And she's right in the middle of the ring. There's no way for her to get out. There's nowhere to go. And Hilda. I think, oh, she, oh, look at she that. pulled her arm out a she, socket. She, Wait she a second. Found, she found a way out. Hilda won the title. Oh my Hilda's God. Hilda's the new champion.
nice show of sportsmanship from the former champion Erica Torres to the new champion Hilda. Hilda making history here tonight at the epic, the biggest show ever, Destiny. And listen to this crowd. Man, unbelievable. I didn't think anybody was going to be able to topple Erica Torres, but Hilda found a way. There's your new MPX Women's Champion. Erica Torres was a dominant champion, but Hilda was the one to dethrone her of that women's title. And look how excited Hilda is. How can you not be happy for Hilda doing what many thought was the unthinkable and taking that title from Torres? Tal, are you ready? Are you ready for a hardcore war? Hardcore tag team match. I don't know if the Epic has ever seen anything quite like what they're about to witness right now. I know I'm ready, but if you're Sky Daily Cremosa and Mr. Legs, you gotta wonder, are they ready? Are they ready to deal with Dana Phil? Are they ready to deal with the hardcore Hawaiian himself, Kaimi? And are they ready to deal with the head coach, Nick Caldwell? We saw Kaimi victorious last week in a hardcore match with Sky Dale and Cremosa. Of course, he had a bit of help. It's a hardcore match. It doesn't matter. There's no rules. Kaimi walks right into Sky Dale and Cremosa's world and knocked off the Texas Chainsaw. That's why he has now been dubbed officially the Hardcore Hawaiian. As the addicts rise to their feet for the entrance of the Texas Chainsaw himself. Many thought there was a possibility after that hardcore match last week that Scott Alcamosa wouldn't make it here to the Epic. But here comes his tag team partner. Tyler, I know so many members of the Lex family flew in today to be here at the Epic. They're, they're they came here. in from Flagstaff. They came in from Lexington, Kentucky. They're in the building. That's what that is. Uh, there are even members of the Lex family all the way from Luxembourg, Germany. From, from where? Luxembourg. Le Le Not you, Luxembourg, Luxembourg. Now you show me on a map where that is. I'll show you I, later. I want to see. You know, Mr. Lex, he, he passed off one of his legs to Sky Nail Gravosa. He's got a chainsaw bat, he's got a leg. Lex has got a chainsaw bat and a leg. This is how they're both coming to this hardcore match. And who knows where these men are going to fight out here in the Epic. We've got balconies up above us. They could go all the way up there. They might go on the parking lot. Mr. Legs, who made his return several months ago back at the Texas Rumble, who's had nothing but issues with the TWC since returning here at MPX. Oh, and DeVille and Kaimi not waiting. Here we go. The TWC not here to wait around. They are going to take the fight right to Legs and De La Cremosa. No rules in this one. Nothing referee Travis Trueborn can do but just sit back and wait for a pinfall or submission. Although he might want to keep his eye on Caldwell. Uh -oh, all legs are legal in this one. You can use anything you can get your hands on. And we're going to do our best to keep up with the action. That's why it looks like Dana Ville already looking under the ring for something. We got Sky Dale 
Hermosa and Kaimi right oh, out there. Oh, Javille, he's got a road us. sign. It's not going to be a dead end tonight for Mr. Legs. Well, maybe it is. DDT on the road sign. Tito, you see, looking to win it early. No, only a one count. The Sky, Sky just pulled a chair out, driving it right into the ribs of Kaimi. Right, they're right here in front of us. This throws the chair right at the back of Kaimi. Meanwhile, back in the ring, Dana DeVille showing off that power. And DeVille driving Mr. Legs into the turbine, tying him up here in the tree of woe. What's DeVille going to do here? Pulling that road sign that he brought in, back up, putting it across the face and chest of, of Mr. Legs. And DeVille charging in, basement oh. drop kick. And driving that sign right back into Mr. Legs. He looks for a cover here. This might be it. You want on the outside, Kaimi and Dale Cremosa. Oh, back inside, cover from DeVille. Only a two count. Dale Cremosa, I think he's got that wiffle ball bat with the chain wrapped around it. Legs into the corner. DeVille charges in, legs up and over. Into the corner, no backdrop, no. He's doing a headstand. Yeah, Mr. Legs, we see he, he can excel from this position. And Dale Cremosa just came in and leveled Dane DeVille. Mr. Legs is still up there. As DeVille and Sky head out to the floor. Oh, Kaimi got caught. And he walks right into the trap. And the hardcore Hawaiians sit right into the turnbuckle. The legs kicking away the arm of Kaimi. And look at the athleticism of legs. And springboard arm drag from Mr. Legs taken down. The man from Big Island, Hawaii. And very atomic drop. Meanwhile, DeVille and De La Cremosa still going at it on the outside. They're looking for more toys. And De DeVille. The sky, Sky's got a staple gun. And that running kick from Legs, this might do it for the TWC. No. Naimi able to kick out. Sky heaving a steel chair right into the head of Dana Phil. Taylor Cremosa again digging back under the ring. He's got a bowling ball. Sky to El Cremosa. It's, it doesn't matter what building we're in, that bowling ball travels everywhere. He might be looking for a 7-10 split here. And the bowling ball is getting a chance here at the Epic. Oh, wait a second, DeVille back in. Well, Mr. Not for long. And Mr. Legs making the save for his tag team partner there. I think Sky is about to step no, up. No, Le Legs wants to show off his bowling skills. Oh, Mr. Legs now on the approach. Oh, oh wait a second, oh, oh. Kaimi thought he stopped it. You know, the Legs family, they're part of the bowling league, Tyler. Well, of course they are. They do fantastic. Well, Scott They've Hill. won their league trophy four years in a row. It was Scott Hill Hermosa picking up the spare on that one. And that huge boot from Legs, Kaimi back to his feet. Another kick from Mr. Legs. Kaimi not staying down, swinging a miss. Oh, lands the leap in Zaguri. Well, out on the floor, Dana Ville trying to dump Dale Cremosa out into the front row. And look, it doesn't matter what building we're in. You've got a match of this magnitude. They're going to go through the crowd, and that's what they're doing right here. They're over here by the merchandise tables. Watch out. Watch out for the children. This guy and DeVille, and they're right over here to our left. Nick Caldwell's over there now as well. And always oh, say, watch out for the camera. Watch out for the camera. It's now DeVille with that ladder. Phil, what is it? He's setting the ladder up. Thought he was going to try to take out. Dale like Cremosa with the ladder. Like he was about to ram it with the ladder. Instead, he's, with the help of Nick Caldwell, he set oh, Caldwell. Oh, is Caldwell climbing the ladder? No, Caldwell's on the, he's on the wrong side. You're not supposed to climb that side of the ladder. As Dale Cremosa said head first into the merch table. Meanwhile, Kaimi, Mr. Legs over there on the, the opposite side of the ring. Oh, wait a second. Dana oh. Ville's up on the ladder. Where's he going? What? Dana Ville. Deville on the ladder. ladder. Down on oh. the, Dale Cremosa. Set it and he go through the table. Dana Ville. Probably for the 
for the first time in his life, leaping off of a ladder. And Nick Caldwell there to help Dana Ville back to his feet. And now they both are heading back towards the ring. Dale Cremosa. Oh, and back inside, Kaimi, Mr. Legs going at it. Kaimi sent it. Oh, leaping knee from Kaimi. Can we get Caldwell out of here again? Can we eject him out of here? But it's a hardcore match. Who cares? And now, TWC, like it or not, they've done this smart thing. They've systematically eliminated Sky De La Cremosa from this hardcore yeah. tag team match. And the Texas Chainsaw, he's still in a heap over here on the floor. Meanwhile, DeVille and Kaimi have Mr. Legs alone in the ring. And Kaimi up top. Here you go, this is going to be it. Cross Mr. body legs. on legs off DeVille's shoulders. Here's Kaimi looking for the cover with the help of DeVille. Oh, De La Cremosa, where'd they come from? I thought he was still down over here. De La Cremosa throwing the chair, breaking up the count. The sky sending Dana Ville out to the floor. How did Sky De La Cremosa, he's got the staple gun again. He pulled that staple gun out earlier. Now De La Cremosa has it back in his hand. What is he going to do with it? Amy down inside of the ring, but now Legs and De La Cremosa on the outside with Dataville. Legs, legs is using dull legs as a weapon on Dataville. Anything goes here in this hardcore match. He's got from doll legs to mannequin legs. Wait, is that Randy or is that Lenny? I can't tell them apart. I believe that's Lenny. Lenny has dimples. All these legs look the same. No, Lenny has dimples. That's how I, you can tell them apart. I see. And now Deville pulled back up. And legs and Deville. Or De La Cremosa, rather. Wait, wait, look at, meanwhile, look at Kaimi. Uh oh. Kaimi is up on the top rope. The Hawaiian up top. No, oh my God. Oh, the hardcore Hawaiian said. just went flying. Kaimi just took out both Mr. Legs and Scott De La Cremosa. And Kaimi back up, looking to live up to this new hardcore Hawaiian attitude. The Kaimi again, heading to the top rope with Mr. Legs. Down in the middle. Diamond elbow from the top. Is the TLC gonna win this one? No. Only two, wait a second. Dana Ville's got a table. And Dana Ville setting up a table out here on the floor. DeVille and Dana Cremosa. Oh no, oh, DeVille sent head first into the guardrail. We saw DeVille put Dana Cremosa through this table. His merch table out over by us a little bit ago. He was looking for another one at ringside. You know, back in the ring, Kaimi just grabbed something from underneath the ring. He's got a bag. What's in that bag, Tyler? I think we're about to find out. Oh, are those Legos? That, that's what it looks like. Legos have now entered the match. That looks like a huge array of green and blue Legos. Oh, wait a second. Kaimi is going to try to suplex Taylor Cremosa into. De La Cremosa blocking it. Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. No, the no. Wings power bomb on the Legos! You want to be a hardcore Hawaiian? There you go! And you see the Legos implanted into the skin of Kaimi. It's a rough and unfortunate landing for Kaimi. Not what he had in mind when he brought those in. And the addicts are right. This is epic. Sky De La Cremosa trying to get back to him. Mr. Lex pulled out a table over there on the other side. We've got one table set up on the outside. Now this one being brought inside the ring. Sky, their position. Oh, look at Caldwell. In the, corner. the head coach, Nick Caldwell, in the ring. Get him out of there. He's going to put a stop to Oh, this. wait a second. I don't think so. Whistle blows. That means stop. This might be the moment what? of the night. Wait, whoa, whoa. What, what is... No, 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 no. no. What is, He's got Caldwell up. No. Oh, no. he slapped through the table. Caldwell was just driven through the table but, by the Texas Chainsaw. And for what? For, for, what? for what? He's a head coach. He's a jackass. That's what he is. Hopefully that's the last we've seen of Nicholas Caldwell here tonight. DeVille back up on the apron. Oh, DeVille sent through the table. That kick from Mr. Legs. In the same table Dana Ville set up out there. Just a second ago comes back to bite him. 
And now Dale Cremoso, he's got that, that bat with the chainsaw blades. Well, you got Caldwell being carried out of here. Dataville just went through a table on the floor. Oh, and that bat being driven into the forehead of Kaimi. But Kaimi might be all by himself with the Texas chainsaw and Mr. Legs. Oh, Legs going up to, oh no, wait a second. Look out. Coast oh. to coast. It's driving Randy and Lenny right into Kaimi and death by stereo. Oh, the Legos. And that's going to do it. What a hardcore tag team match we just witnessed. And not, not the outcome the hardcore Hawaiian was looking for. He ate those Legos not once, but twice. And unfortunately, after that death by stereo, after the coast to coast from Mr. Legs, it was too much for Kaimi and the TWC to be able to overcome. And the Legs family that are here in attendance have to be super proud of Mr. Legs. And it doesn't matter where you're from in the world, Tyler, whether it's Weaving Mary, Texas, Lexington, Kentucky, or even Luxembourg, you got to appreciate the hardcore effort from both Scott Elacromosa and Mr. Lex here tonight at Destiny. What a tag match. Alex, we got to get this stuff cleaned up. We've got plenty more still to come. Main event, MPX title on the line, Aaron Eagle. And the Tommy Becker will go one-on-one. -on -one. We also know we're going to see Zachary Wentz. Kari Wright and their mystery opponent in that triple threat match. Well, how about one in a million Tatum Manning, Grand Prairie's own one-on-one -on -one with TNH Trey Miguel. But up next, it is going to be time for the huge 15 competitor Epic Battle Royal. Don't go anywhere. The Epic Battle Royal is up next. It's MPX's Destiny. <laughs> I've waited for this, and on June 15th, at the Epic, it's going to be a bloodbath at the Purge. Me and you, one on one, two monsters ripping each other apart. I cannot wait. competitors. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I think Dante Walker is gone. Dante Walker's been eliminated. A package pile driver from Red Chambers on the ring apron is all she wrote for Dante Walker. Oh, Big J just with a double slot sidewalk slam center of the ring. This field of 15 is down to 13. It's Franco D'Angelo. The oh. Gross Super Cop Turbo, who just I do believe is on suspension from the Grand Prix Police Department. Oh, Big, Big J gone. Adam Green with a drop kick, sending Big J over the top. Look at the shock on the face of Big J. He's trying to bully Adam Green out of the ring. Well, he came under the bottom rope. Oh, yeah. and sending Adam Green into the guardrail. Adam Green is not eliminated. He, oh, look at Polly Paparazzi. LBJ and Cayman's almost gone. And they both, they both held on. As Ocho Camacho, nailing those hands of LBJ, trying to eliminate him. Both men back up. At the same time, LBJ and Cayman's both make their way back into the ring. Polly Paparazzi going to try again. And now Cayman's oh. and LBJ working together. Oh, Polly, oh, Polly. He's going to try to skip the count. Uh, Polly's holding on. Can Polly skip the count like they did? Polly Paparazzi. No, not quite. Well, it still works. He still saved himself. However you do it, that's what you got to do. That's Polly. Oh, Polly. No, he didn't save himself. Uh, down goes the towel boy, Polly Paparazzi. Rich, oh, oh watch out for Cayman's. Well, he got, he got Cavins halfway over the top. Cavins has been almost out several times. Brixton Shaw with the Calabunga can, Adam Green. LBJ and Ocho Camacho going out of here. Comes Chambers on the back of Angel Camacho. What did this down? What did the last two Tyler happen to be? Angel and Ocho Camacho. We've seen them go at it before. Absolutely, yeah. We know that there's no love loss between the brothers, despite the family ties. They haven't seen eye to eye much recently. Oh, there goes Chambers. He might be out. The Red Chambers able to hold on. And then Adam Green on the other side. Caleb Riley. Oh, oh Chambers is gone. Uh, goodbye. And the Son of Mayhem's night comes to an end at the hands of the Puerto Rican juggernaut, Angel Camacho. Now Adam Green in trouble over on the other side of the ring. And Green up and over. The LBJ. Now up and over. Oh, he's pulling Ocho Camacho over with him. Oh, Ocho and LVJ on the apron. They both need to get back through the ropes. Oh, Ocho better be careful. Yeah, LVJ trying to get rid of Ocho Camacho. What? Oh, Spock oh. oh, my God, right oh, on the edge of the apron. <laughs> Painful elimination to watch of LVJ's Franco. Spearing bricks and so out of the corner. Oh, and the golden boy, Caleb Riley, the sidekick, the hero of the people. Oh, he's going up and over. Holds on on the ring apron. And Jojo trying to get rid of Riley. See, what's he, what got he, there? he just pulled something out of his pants. And Joe, he's got is that a shirt? That looks like a that looks like one of those sidekick shirts. And Caleb Riley holding on to that shirt. Oh, oh. Jojo let go! And Caleb Riley's eliminated. No way. No, I don't I don't think anybody saw it. Nobody saw Caleb Riley hit the floor. Caleb Riley was eliminated. Nobody saw it. That money catch on Esquire trying to trying to talk to a referee, but no, none of them. Where are the refs at? What are they doing? None of them were in position to see Riley hit the floor. Now he's gonna hit a hero's pose. He better be careful. Cavins with that headbutt to the midsection of Riley. It's a fort, should be out of here. Fortunate situation for Caleb Riley. He is still in this battle royal, but, uh, but JoJo's not. It's back to the streets of Miami. And look at that. Look, Angel and Ocho are working together. If they continue to do so the rest of this match, then I'm guaranteeing you those are the final two. I uh, guess the brothers Camacho. Maybe they patched things up. They can clear out everybody and decide it between themselves. I mean, who's going to stop the Camachos working together? Oh, Adam Green oh. up and over again, but holding on. The Brixton Shaw thought he got rid of Green, but Adam Green's still in this. Oh, and what a kick to Green. Oh, Riley almost out. But, and Green. Oh, there goes Adam Green. 
Caleb Riley, he's, he's hero posing on the apron. Riley close to being eliminated for a second time. Tornado kick on Riley. They saw that one. As Caleb Riley now officially eliminated. Oh, Brixton Shaw. Brixton Shaw just got launched into the guardrail. And Tyler, we're down to four. Angel and Ojo Camacho, Dylan Cavins, and Franco D'Angelo. And which one's it going to be one of these four competitors? What's well, Tony Snow doing? El Jefe with a couple slaps for brilliant Dylan Cavins. And I don't like the odds of Dylan Cavins here. Yeah, again, if the Camachos work together, clear out Franco and Cavins. Cavins started. Oh, oh my God. He just got demolished by both Camachos. Yeah, Franco D'Angelo, he's just standing back watching the damage the Camachos are causing here to Cavins. Cavins, he might not be long for this battle royal at this point with, his, with the Camachos working together. Look, Angel just passed him off to Ocho. They're trying to decide which one's going to eliminate just Cavins. Toss him. Who cares? But now they gave him to Franco. Franco setting Cavins down. A little bit surprising. Oh, and Franco with one hand just sends Cavins right into the Camachos. Yeah, Angel and Ocho with Cavins up. What are they going to do with them? Oh, my oh. God. And that's it for Perilia Della Cavins. But now it is Franco D'Angelo against both Angel and Ocho Camacho. And this is going to be tough for Franco D'Angelo again. The Camachos working together. If they can get rid of Franco D'Angelo and decide it between themselves. Bring that, that beautiful trophy into the Camacho family. Well, the odds are definitely in the favor of the Camachos here. It's the last three are in this epic battle royal, but Franco with a close out of the corner. But Franco D'Angelo doing whatever he can to try to fight out of this two-on-one situation. But now Angel going to take over for Brother Ocho. And I think this might be the end for Franco D'Angelo. I mean, why wouldn't it be? With with the Camacho, oh, but the Franco. Camacho's working together. Franco again able to fight his way loose. Again, the head wrestling coach of Grand Prairie High School. Oh, Franco, Franco's going to try to get rid of Ocho Camacho. Just a few minutes down the road. But now here comes Angel to make sure that was not going to happen. And the two-on-one from the Camachos continues. Here at the expense of Franco D'Angelo. Wait a second. Oh! oh. Angel's gone! Oh, Ocho! Brother. And Ocho's gone! And we are down to Franco D'Angelo. Franco D'Angelo, Angel Camacho, the last two left in this epic battle royal. Franco might have done just as much damage to himself as he did Angel. But Angel back to his feet. Franco, get him back up. Can he get him over? They are trying to lift the Puerto Rican juggernaut up and over that top rope. I think Franco's I too big. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Franco charging in. Close on. Oh, no. The Angel still staying in. Boy, look at this. Oh, just back. Uh, Ocho Camacho, they're trying to save his brother and push him back into the ring. Franco, I think, just used about everything he's got to keep or to get Angel up and over that top rope. Angel Camacho on the apron. Here comes Franco, charges in. Uh, Drop kick to Angel, there goes uh, Angel. And Franco D'Angelo is your winner. Somehow overcoming that two-on-one disadvantage with Ocho and Angel Camacho. 
And you see that Franco D'Angelo wearing the, the wrestling singlet. Grand Prairie High School. And he's come to Grand Prairie and he has claimed this epic Battle Royal Championship trophy. Congratulations to Franco D'Angelo on winning the epic Battle Royal here at the Epic in Grand Prairie for Destiny. And it's no easy feat for anybody to be able to get Angel Camacho up and over the top rope in any situation. But Franco D'Angelo has pulled that off and is walking away the winner of the Epic Battle Royal. What a night of action we've witnessed so far, Tyler Foster. Again, we appreciate everyone watching. No matter where you are in the world, here twitch.tv slash Metroplex Wrestling. Cody Cox with Tyler Foster. The biggest show, not just biggest show of the year, Tyler. Biggest show in the history of this company. We've been saying it all night long. You can look out amongst the crowd. We've never had an MPX show with this many people in attendance. We thank the, the Epic here at Grand Prairie for having us. They have just been fantastic to work with. But Tyler, we're not done. Absolutely not. You can almost say we're just getting started. And Tyler, how about that announcement we just had? Just as I was talking about how great the Epic was, we get the announcement that this is not MPX's last time. This is our first time here. We are going to be back here in June for another great show, one of our perennial favorites, The Purge, and the big announcement, the Reign of Honor Women's Champion, the Fallen Goddess Athena, will be here in action that evening. And the return engagement for MPX here at the Epic already set this coming June, The Purge. And The Purge, but one thing you know about The Purge is that you can expect any and everything. And that is going to be the first time for Athena to experience an MPX Purge. The longest reigning Ring of Honor Women's Champion will be here at the Purge. We invite you to be here with us as well. As the, the forever Ring of Honor Women's Champion. <laughs> Initially when this match here was announced, Tyler, it was Corey Wright one-on-one -on -one with Zachary Wentz. Then we find out last week from Jamie Aller, oh no, there's going to be a third person at it. We still don't know who that is. We've been told there's clues. I've seen the speculation online, just like you have. I don't like to speculate, because I don't like to be wrong. I really, it, it, it could be anybody. I mean, we're all going to find out together. As we now meet one of the rascals, TNA Wrestling Zachary Wentz making his MPX debut here tonight at the Epic. Zachary Wentz, a former TNA World Tag Team Champion, along with Trey Miguel, who we're going to see here in a little bit. Zachary Wentz getting the addicts on their feet here tonight. But I want to see who this mystery opponent is. This is going to be very interesting. I mean, you look at the dynamic you have. This is the match we thought we were going to see. Kari Wright versus Zachary Wentz. But let's see was it exactly what we're going to get here. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I just oh. saw the look on the face of Kari Wright. And someone better tell Zachary Wentz, he might want to be concerned as well. Yeah, I know that music, and look, look at that. The ungodly heathen, the world breaker himself, Brick Savage, is the mystery opponent. Now you want to talk about changing the face, changing the outlook of this match. You had the ungodly heathen, Brick Savage. I was in this building about a month ago. One of our great partners, Wrestling Revolver, was here. Brick Savage, there's a clip going around that's viral online. Brick Savage put his fist through a door. It's been all over TikTok, all over Instagram. If I'm Zachary Wentz and Corey Wright, 
I am deathly afraid that his fist might go through my chest. And it's not out of the realm of possibility when Rick Savage is in the ring. This triple threat match is now taking on a, a whole new feel. Rick Savage added into the mix. Kari Wright to do anything he can to try to neutralize Savage. Now Zachary Wentz charging in. Zachary Wentz going to try his hand. Rick Savage is shoving off everybody. And both Kari and Zachary. Oh, what a super kick from Kari. But Rick Savage still on his feet. And now Wentz with a super kick. And that also did not take Rick Savage down. Savage was staring at oh, Double clothesline takes down both Kari Wright and Zachary Wentz. He took those super kicks and stared right back at both of his opponents and leveled them both with clotheslines. Squashes Kari Wright in the corner. There's one for Zachary Wentz as well. And Rick Savage has been make, making a name for himself every single place they go, and this is no different. But Zachary Wentz and Kari Wright doing the smart thing here, in my opinion, working together to take the ungodly heathen down off his feet. Well, standing drop kick, Savage going to the outside. Oh, Savage to the floor, that's exactly what Wentz and Wright needed to do, get this match back to the singles match that we originally thought we were going to see between these two. Now, now, Wentz, yeah, Zachary Wentz extending the hand. I don't know if he's that familiar with Kari Wright. Kari Wright doesn't do a lot of sportsmanship. No, I don't know that Kari Wright's going to uh, return that extended hand exactly. Well, he thought about it. He did, he shook his hand. And then he kicks it away. That's that's the Kari Wright we all know. And use what you gotta do to get the advantage. It's been a mixed night for the TWC. Demo Diamond, the new Addicts champion. Our day to Ville and Kaimi did not fare well in their hardcore tag match a little bit earlier. We'll see how Corey Wright does for the TWC. Nice leapfrog from Zachary Wentz. Of course, you were, you were so excited about it earlier. Why don't you let everyone know why, why head coach Nick Caldwell's not out here? Yep, put through a door. I'm going to rewind that over and over on Twitch. I bet. And the legs of Zachary Wentz taking Savage off the apron. Corey Wright, right there waiting with a drop kick for Zachary Wentz. Now the reincarnation of excellence with those shoulders rest in the corner. Irish whip, nope. Wentz up and over. Stuck on over Kari. He's looking for the famous or Zachary Wentz blocks it. Kari lands on his feet. Finally drives the face of Zachary Wentz face first into the apron. Nobody there for Wentz. Here comes Corey Wright. And charging in. I don't know if that was a forearm or a clothesline, but he caught Wentz with it, and it was effective. Rick Savage finally back up. Keep your eyes on Corey Wright. I think Wright saw Savage. Tope Suicida takes the ungodly heathen down. And you can see the reincarnation of Exodus doing everything possible to keep Rick Savage out of this match. Now right back on the apron. Wentz went to sweep the legs, missed. Went for the knee, missed that as well. And now Corey Wright looking to take advantage of the situation with Zachary Wentz all alone. Wentz, a couple quick shots. Corey Wright with nobody there on the kick. And both men had the same idea. Both roundhouse kicks connect. Wentz and Wright are both down. Savage still down on the outside. Oh, Rick Savage. Rick Savage is back up. Savage finally able to get back into the ring. As both Zachary Wentz and Corey Wright still struggle to get to their feet. Now Savage charges in. Runs through the arms. Double shoulder tackle. Savage stomping away on Wentz. Now these clubbing blows to Kari Wright. Rick Savage now taking out some of the frustration from being uh, excluded from this match for the, for the most part since he got underway. And look at the power of Savage just launching Kari Wright onto Wentz. 
Oh, wait a second, into the inadvertent cover. Gut wrench suplex on right sends him into the corner. But Rick, Rick almost lost the match there. Quickly realizing what was happening. The into the power out. slam. Savage might win right here. And just like we saw in that Triple Threat Alex title match earlier, Tyler, you have to have eyes in the back of your head just when you think someone's about to win it. Here comes the other guy to break it up. You've always got that extra competitor around somewhere. You've got to be aware of at all times. Just when you think you have things well in hand, somebody might be right there to ruin it. Now look at the power. Into the setup, power bomb. Two. And somehow Kari Wright was able to kick out of that. Because Zachary Wentz was nowhere around to break it up. A Wentz still out on the floor. Did you see how easily Rick Savage just pulled Kari right up off the mat? And into that power bomb. Savage looking around. Stepping right over the reincarnation of excellence. And what's Savage doing? Rick Savage. Rick Savage is going, going to the top rope. Very uncharacteristic like of Rick Savage. But here comes Zachary Wentz. Uppercut rock Savage. But Wentz not going to wait around to see what Rick had in mind there. Cutting off the ungodly heathen. And Zachary Wentz just yelled to Corey Wright, help me. Kari wants no part of Rick Savage. But Wentz got up there and realized he's going to need help. And finally, Kari Wright giving in. And Wentz and Wright with Rick Savage up on the top row. Double suplex. And Savage. Rick Savage is down. This could be the time for either Zachary Wentz or Kari Wright to take advantage. And I think this whole building shook. Rick Savage hit the mat off that double suplex off the top rope. But now can either Kari Wright or Zachary Wentz take advantage of this situation as both try to get back to their feet, but at the same time, Rick Savage trying to, try to get back up as well. Here goes Wentz with a couple of forearms to right. Blocks the right hand of Savage, sweep the leg. And now Zachary Wentz in full control. Zachary Wentz wants to get the victory here in his MPX debut. Center of the ropes, leapfrog, oh no, nice takedown from Wentz. And Wentz able to grab the leg. Into the German suplex with the bridge. Oh, that was almost three. I thought he had the freak out there, Wentz. Very close to walking away with that win. A deadlift German from the rascal. And now Wentz going to the outside, he's on the apron. Wentz eyeing Rick Savage. Oh, Savage oh. blocks the kick. Might have been a mistake. Just sending Zachary Wentz. Head first into the apron. And Rick Savage heading back into the ring with the reincarnation of excellence in sight. Kari back to his feet. And Savage is shoving him into the corner. Kari able to move out of the way. Savage. Sending Kari right up and over to the ring apron. Oh, that stiff kick from Kari Wright. Compelling himself, using the foot to drive it right into the chest of Savage. The Zachary Wentz back up on the ring apron. Oh, and Kari hits the kick from Zachary Wentz. Kari Wright coming in. Now Wentz launching himself back in through the ropes. Nice counter from Kari. And Kari from the turnbuckle. Oh, springboard disaster kick. That caught Wentz perfectly. Did Kari right. Now look at the pump handle from the reincarnation of excellence. Down across the knee. Could Kari get the victory? This could be it, right. Covers hooks the leg. Deep cover, but Brick oh. Savage right there to break it up. Brick Savage was just too close. Right, eyeballing Brick Savage as he gets back to his feet. Gonna make Savage pay for costing him what was a sure victory there, it looked like. All right, going back to Zachary Wentz in the corner. A couple of body blows and now putting Wentz up on the top turnbuckle. 
And now Kari, maybe looking to climb up there with Wentz. Kari might be looking at a backpack bomb from the top. I think that's exactly what he's looking for. Right oh, the Savage is oh, up. No, Rick Savage. Kari took way too much time getting that set up. And now Savage. Savage playing spoiler there for Kari Wright. And Wentz up top. Blockbuster on Savage forced him to DDT Kari Wright. No, if Zachary Wentz could get over into a cover on one of these two, that might do it. All three men are down. Who's going to take advantage? The Wentz trying to fire himself back up, trying to get the addicts behind him. As he looks to pick up this win here, but Brick Savage almost back up. And charges in using the ropes for leverage. Springboard cutter on Savage. A car back up. All right, Kata with that knee. Backpack stutter. No backpack no. bomb on Wentz. Can Kari get the victory here? But no Savage again right there to break it up. Again, Rick Savage just too close. Those elbows almost out of desperation for Kari Wright. 12 to 6. Savage with the cover. Savage with the victory. Rick Savage, the mystery third member of this triple threat match, comes in and picks up the victory. And unfortunately for Kari Wright, this was not the destiny that he had in mind. Rick Savage victorious in a match that no one knew he was going to be in. Many speculated, but no one knew for sure. As Rick Savage continues to show why he might be the most dominant, ungodly heathen on the planet. Rick Savage comes into the epic big time victory here over not only Corey Wright but Zachary Wentz as well. Oh. 
Celestials post contact. And then we heard how many ugly ass children are going to get into this. And we left. Epic cover only a one count. 
man. I did hear some of these acts. They, they had some not so nice things to say about Trey Miguel. Only after he disparaged the great people in Grand Prairie. I don't know. I think they were saying it before. So. Like Trey Miguel, he, he had a point. And Miguel with an eye bench chop in the corner. Miguel taking Manny. Into another corner. And a poke to the eyes. I thought he, thought he was going to chop him again, but Trey Miguel had something else in mind. Attacking the eyes of one in a million, Tatum Manning. Snamar yeah. take over, that kick to the spine. Miguel with the lateral press. Failing to hook the leg, only a two count. This is referee Carl Knight. And Manning's in it, no reversal. Oh, Miguel hold on to the top rope. Manning charges in. Spring oh, Miguel having the wherewithal to grab that middle rope right as Manny was about to springboard from it. But Trey Miguel doing what he had to do there to make sure there's going to be no springboard from Manny. Only able to get a one, one count after the uh, the one foot pin attempt. Literally hasn't taken enough out of Tatum Manny yet. Manny fighting out the corner, putting Miguel in the corner now. The top from Manning. And Miguel using Manning's own tights to propel him face first into that middle turnbuckle. Miguel putting Tatum Manning, they're hanging him upside down in the corner. Manning that trim one position. And Miguel keeping his foot there, it was like across the throw to Manning. Tatum Manning tries to get out of the tree of woe. Miguel taking way too much time. Here comes Trey Miguel from the opposite. I think he faked him out. And behind the referee's back. That was a little bit low. I think, or he's high because Manning was upside down. I think, I think they call that, call that a sack tap. Executed perfectly by Trey Miguel. And the chin lock applied down from Miguel. Tatum Manning looks to get back into this here in front of his fellow Grand Prairie residents. So you hear this Grand Prairie crowd getting behind Tatum Manning. Trey Miguel. Oh, Manning back to his feet. Miguel charges in. Runs into the elbow. Eats the boot this time for Manning. Does Manning. And Manning able to catch Trey Miguel coming into the corner. Oh, sunset flip. Shoulders down. And only able to keep him down for two. Oh, what a kick oh. from Trey Miguel. And yeah, Trey Miguel might have just ended any chance Tatum Manning had of getting this hometown victory with that one kick. And now Miguel all of his body weight across the back of the neck of Manning, choking him across that middle rope. Oh, I was going to say, may have knocked out Tatum Manning with that kick, but Manning is still fighting back. Look at the suplex, Manning on his feet. Looks under the elbow. Oh, he was looking for maybe the springboard stunner, but Trey Miguel chopped the back of Manning. That caught him right across the back. Miguel with the cover. Cover. Only able to get two again, but Trey Miguel stays in the driver's seat here. Maybe looking to fly. Miguel going up top. About to show why he's a former X Division champion. Just one quick leap up to the top rope goes Trey Miguel. Manning to his feet. Miguel took too long. Miguel charges in. Manning sidesteps out of the corner. Manning looking to build a comeback. Springboard stutter on Miguel. He hits it this time. That second time the charm there for Tatum Manning. But I don't know that he's going to be able to capitalize. So much has been taken out of Tatum Manning here over the last couple of minutes. But Manning, Manning able to sit up. Manning on his feet in one corner, Miguel in the opposite corner. Splash in the corner on Miguel. Snake eyes. Was Manning off the ropes. Building momentum, huge boot to the face. Swing to the 
Goodness. Manning with the right hand. Yeah. Spinebuster. Float over into the cover. Two. Two. Only two. Not quite enough. Gertana Manning, Trey Miguel. Able to answer the referee's count there following that spine buster. Tatum Manning, he had to know coming in, he was going to need not just his A game, but his A plus game to be able to put Trey Miguel away. We're going to see what Tatum Manning is going to be able to pull out here. And up top, he might be looking for that elbow time we've seen him use recently. Oh no. I know it's the boot up. Manning caught it. That jumps over the leg sweep attempt of Miguel. Let's go behind. Look at the quickness of Miguel. Down across the back of Manning. Into the cover. Two. And Tatum Manning still staying in this. And it's just, it's nearly impossible to be able to combat speed like that that Trey Miguel possesses. I don't care if you're Tatum Manning or anybody else. I mean, they say speed kills for a reason. And Trey Miguel very quickly finds himself back in control. Nice block for Manning. What's he looking for? Takes Miguel down to the mat. Maybe the cross face. Oh, he's, got, he's got that cross face. Hooked in on Miguel. And Miguel rolls him over. Rolls him down. And Manning forced to release the holder. Let's get counted down for three. In Zaguri from Miguel. Manning staggers in the corner. Miguel follows in. Double knees to the chest. And Trey Miguel looking to run. This, oh, wait a second. Oh, Manning, Manning rolled Kill. through. Into the half crab. Manning rolled through there and took possession of the leg of Trey Miguel. Trey Miguel is looking to ruin this homecoming for Tatum Manning here tonight. Manning, he was trying to pull Miguel closer to the middle of the ring. Now back, look back into the cross face. We got it, man. Manning realized how close Miguel was to the ropes there, trying to get him back more towards the middle of the ring. Now hooking the arm. Can Manning get him his hat this time? And Trey Miguel trying to move himself towards the bottom rope. He's got it. He got to reach out a foot. Now Manning's going to be forced to break this cross face. Got to bring it a wrist disqualification. Both Miguel and Manning are down. The referee Carl Knight starting the 10 count as both competitors now down on the mat. Manning not able to get the tap out from Trey Miguel. They're after the half crab or that second cross face attempt. As now both Miguel and Manning go up to their knees. And Manning fighting back as these guys traded forearm strikes. Both men to their feet now. Overhead from Manning. Oh, what a chop. And Trey Miguel giving Tata Manning the fight of his life here tonight. Diamond shot. No, Wait, right back kick up. into the Right back up with Trey Miguel. Hands brands are going from Miguel into the cover. Two. No, only two. Tatum Manning lucky. Lucky to kick out of that. And Trey Miguel can't believe it. He's right in the, in the face of referee Carl Knight. Uh, meanwhile, Tatum Manning is back on his feet. Manning back up. Oh, look out. Oh, he put the brakes on. Here he comes. Oh! Carl Knight just got knocked right in the face by Trey Miguel Roll. Well, there's, there's no referee to count. No referee to count. Tatum Manning may have had the victory right there. Manning should be the winner. Unfortunately, there's no referee. What's, what's Miguel doing? Miguel's looking under the ring for something. Trey Miguel is a steel chair. Manning doesn't realize it. A steel chair in hand for Trey Miguel, and there is nobody to stop it. And he just chopped the chair right in the skull of Manning. And now Miguel on the cover, but still there's no referee. The referee Carl Knight still down after getting caught in the corner. And that drop kick from Trey Miguel. And Miguel doing his best.
Hawks trying to bring the revival. Two. Two. Slow down. No. Even after the steel chair from Trey Miguel, Tatum Manning is able to kick out. And Miguel wasn't frustrated enough after the last kick out. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, Manning is the down. Town. Tatum Manning. Anyway, he tossed it to He tossed it to Miguel. And Referee doesn't know it. Manning is playing possum. Trying to free oh, Trey Miguel. Small package. Two. Oh, he got it. Tatum Manning wins. Tatum Manning caught Trey Miguel by surprise. And Tatum Return to Grand Prairie. And Tatum Manning's been victorious. Manning digging deep into his bag of tricks on that one. But it got him the one, two, three, and a win over Trey Miguel here tonight at Destiny. Tatum Manning is your winner, much to the delight of the fellow Grand Prairie residents here in attendance at the Epic. And Tatum Manning, he successfully defended his home turf here tonight at Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie Mayor Ron Jensen has to be proud and excited for Tatum Manning to get the victory here tonight. And Manning got the match he wanted here tonight, and he leaves with a victory. It couldn't be any sweeter of a homecoming for one in a million Tatum Manning. Not a great night for the Rascals. Zachary Wentz lost earlier, now Trey Miguel. As Tatum Manning soaking in the adulation from the MPX Addicts here at Grand Prairie at the Epic. Tyler, I've been saying this all night, I'm gonna say it again. We're still not done. No, we are not. Main event is up next. The 2024 Texas Rumble winner, the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle, goes one on one with the MPX champion, the Tommy Becker. And we talk about the history, Tyler. This goes back to last year. Remember the brutal ladder match those two men had? And Tommy Becker had to win that ladder match to literally save his wrestling career in the state of Texas. But now, can he knock off Aaron Eagle one more time to keep his MPX championship? As Tatum Manning goes through the crowd to celebrate with the people of Grand Prairie. But going back to Eagle and Tommy Becker, how that went just about a month or so ago when Aaron Eagle turned his back on Becker after a tag team match. We thought these two were on the same page. That was not to be. Eagle won the Rumble. Of course, we've seen the sidekick, the Golden Boy. Some people call him the Golden Sidekick. Caleb Riley, who's been at the side of Aaron Eagle the last couple of weeks. That's Tatum Manning right here in front of us. MPX's destiny continues as we roll on with the main event. Tyler Foster. We both know Aaron Eagle is a former MPX champion looking to become a two-time champion here tonight. But him and Tommy Becker know each other extremely well. Who do you give the advantage to in this? Well, you gotta say the stage has all been set. And it's perfect for the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle. The 2024 Texas Rumble winner, Aaron Eagle. And you see his sidekick, Caleb Riley, right there beside him. Coming out on the losing end of things. 
And what does he have in his hand? What does Caleb Riley have? What is that light? Oh, Aaron Eagle. He's about to give you the most epic hero's pose that you've ever seen. As we could be looking at the next MPX champion right there. Eagle went from one corner to the other. You see, he didn't like posing for that side. And you know, Aaron Eagle, epic. he's not just the hero of the people. He's also the savior of the sidekicks. He's, we got to get this going. He's also the king of cancellations. And just in a few minutes, we're going to be calling him MPX Champion. I'm employing whoever's running sound at the back. Hit Tommy Becker's music. Let's get this main event rolling. No, we, we got time. continues. Aaron Eagle trying to set a record here on a night of destiny. Finally, we're done with these silly poses. And here comes the man that many of myself included say is the best wrestler in the state of Texas. He's proved it time and time again in my opinion. And right now, that title belt on his shoulder goes a long way in proving that. The MPX champion, the Tommy Becker. He's been able to turn away every challenger that's come his way so far since reclaiming that title. But can he do it tonight? against the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle. The three-time MPX champion, the Tommy Becker. Out here to the delight of the MPX addicts in attendance. They're all on his feet. They're all on their feet, excuse me. They want to see Tommy Becker leave here and still champion. Tommy Becker brings that MPX championship here into the main event of Destiny. Right in the middle of the epic. Could he be looking at that title for the very last time? Tommy Becker, we said earlier, has been a fighting champion. But this is what it's all about right here, the main event of the biggest show in the history of the company. Becker coming in as fighting, defending champion. We've seen him successful in every defense he's had thus far. But Aaron Eagle, you gotta think, has the momentum coming into this, coming off the, the ultimate high of winning the Texas Rumble. Can it carry him into a second reign as MPX champion here in just a matter of moments? Title on the line. Referee calls for the foul. This one is underway. You know, main event time here at Destiny. MPX championship at stake. How quickly, Tyler, do you think Tommy Becker is going to go after that ankle of Aaron Eagle. You got to think it's going to be an immediate target. Do you remember? In the past, Becker has put Aaron Eagle on crutches, doing some damage to that ankle before. Caleb Riley, the sidekick at ringside, he knows what that ankle lock feels like all too well. Although this time, Becker, he's got no ladder to try to put that ankle in between. Oh, they're out there on the apron. Close line from Becker takes Eagle off his feet. Oh, look at Caleb Riley, the sidekick. Gonna try, well, he's going to try to lend a helping hand to Becker. Just laid out Caleb Riley. And now Becker up and over, rolls through. Eagle back out on the apron, blocks the right hand. Becker lands the kick. Sweep of the legs. Champion charges in, lands the uppercut. 
sending Eagle to the outside, right there with his sidekick. Riley up on the apron. Right hit from Becker to Riley. It's the second time already Becker has laid out Caleb Riley. Now the MPX champion measuring both the hero and the sidekick out there on the floor. Becker up and over. Took out Riley. Eagle got out of the way. Unfortunately for the hero of the people, able to sidestep that one and dropping the MPX champion back first into the ring apron. Oh, and spine first goes Becker now. Move, move. And now Aaron Eagle telling the addicts to move. He's looking to send Becker. Thought he was going to go into the uh, the crowd and said to send him into the guardrail. And back first into the guardrail with the MPX champion Tommy Becker. Referee's count up to five. Aaron Eagle has got to be aware of that. Again, he can't win the title out on the floor. Cheer me! And now the so-called hero telling the addicts here in Grand Prairie to cheer him. At one point, they did cheer him, and then he turned his back on everybody. And they've just got to be reminded every now and then. Never centered hard in the corner. Eagle holding on. Cheer me! Noticing in front of us, Caleb Riley starting to get back up after being taken out by that somersault plancha from Becker a few moments ago. Aaron Eagle, that would be Tommy Becker. Here in the corner again. Turn around and send him right back into that turnbuckle. You can see the force that Becker, the MPX champion, bounced out of that corner. And now Eagle, what's Eagle doing? Keep your eye on Eagle, they're over He's trying to take that turnbuckle covering off. Aaron Eagle loosening the turnbuckle pad of the corner. I think that referee traps true board. He got caught. Right. Notice what was happening there. Look at Caleb Riley. Yeah, now Riley's trying to finish the job. Caleb Riley's going to go like any good sidekick. <laughs> referee Travis True Board reading Aaron Eagle the riot act, not realizing that Caleb Riley is trying to take that turnbuckle pad off behind his back as Eagle turning his attention now to the champion. And again, as Eagle has the champion on the opposite side of the ring and keeps the referee over there as Caleb Riley has gotten that turnbuckle pad off of Aaron Eagle. And finally, yeah, both Eagle and Riley tearing that pad off now. That, that exposed steel underneath. Yeah, you got nothing but steel over there on that one side of that top turnbuckle. And Eagle trying to bring Becker back towards that corner. Tommy Becker, he saw that that steel was exposed. Doing everything he can to avoid that corner as Eagle now takes him to the ropes. Kicking that middle rope right between the legs of the MPX champion. Eagle dragging the face of the MPX champion across the top rope. And Becker oh, yeah. guess what? So facing the corner. Here comes Eagle. Both knees right to the back of the champion. There's the double knees into the back. From one side of the ring to the other from the hero of the people, Aaron Eagle. And Eagle continuing his assault on the MPX champion, Tommy Becker. Again from the opposite side comes Eagle. Oh, nobody home this time. Knees met turnbuckle. Oh, Becker went for the roll through. Face first goes Eagle into the mat. The Eagle may have tried that one one too many times there. Becker now looking for a cover. Only able to get two. You can see Caleb Riley quickly up on the ring apron there. But again, Becker sends Caleb Riley back down. And now Eagle, huge one-handed spine buster on Becker. The Eagle into the cover. Two. Two. Are you serious? Two. Oh. Oh. God damn. Aaron Eagle only able to get two. Again, going back to work on the MPX champion. The hero of the people is looking to accomplish the biggest cancellation of his entire career here tonight at Destiny and walk away again MPX champion. Is Aaron Eagle turning his attention away from Tommy Becker momentarily? Who wants to hear 
a song. Yeah. Uh, I think he's gonna sing. There no one wants to hear a freaking song. Aaron Eagle's gonna, gonna sing. I want to hear a song. Does he know any other songs? Of course he does. But this is a good one. We stick with the classics. I will choke him out. Let's get let's get him an audition on the mass singer right away, right? That's how how great a singer he is, I'm sure. I, I think he'd do well. He's trying to wear Becker down, but Becker reaching down deep, trying to get back in this. O'Reilly's up on the apron again. The sidekick of the hero of the people up on the apron. Becker. Finally able to get loose with that sleeper hole. Oh, oh! Eagle! Miscommunication knocked Riley down. Axe handle. Another axe handle from Becker. Irish whip, no reversal. Ducks under the clothesline. Becker charges in. Look at the speed. Clothesline takes Eagle off his feet. Uh, v. Tommy Becker is starting to build up some momentum. Now Becker, basement drop kick to Eagle. Becker, you can see the look on the face of E. Tommy Becker. I know exactly what he's got in mind as he is dragging the ankle of the hero of the people towards that turnbuckle. He's got it hooked under the middle, the middle turnbuckle. Becker, he's got it in his sights. Oh. Trying to shatter the ankle of his challenger. And you know what comes next. Ankle lock. Is he going to tap? Can Becker retain the title and here? The MPX champion has that ankle lock locked in on the hero of the people. There, an eagle, eagle desperately needs to get to a rope. Oh, Becker, Becker sits down, great finds the leg. Eagle's got to tap. Eagle, he eagle. can't hold on much longer. Eagle reaching out to Caleb Riley. Oh, look at this, Caleb Riley helping Eagle reach the bottom rope. The sidekick making sure that the hero of the people does not tap out. And the ankle lock has to be broken by the Tommy Becker. Now Becker has his eyes set on, on the sidekick. Oh, Caleb Becker's Riley. going after Caleb Riley. Riley's on the run. This is a mistake on the part of Becker, I understand. But Riley's in the ring. And Reverie Travis Trueborn. Ejecting Riley, why not? Get him the hell out of here. You can't throw a sidekick out. But every good, every good hero needs a sidekick. Caleb Riley has been far too involved in this match. And he's lucky Trueborn didn't disqualify Eagle. Now Becker going right back towards that ankle of Aaron Eagle. Trying to turn him into the ankle lock again, but Eagle pushes him off. Oh, what a forearm from Becker right to the top of the head. Becker now out on the ring apron, maybe looking to go up. That's exactly where he's headed. Eagle back to his feet. Becker up top, cross, but no! Oh. Forearm! The forearm connected with Trueborn! That Becker got nobody but referee Travis Trueborn on that forearm. And Eagle pulled the ref in his way! Should be another disqualification. Okay. As you see Eagle limping on that ankle. And with no referee, that means the sidekick, Caleb Riley, is back in play. Let's get another ref out here and throw Riley back out. And now it's a two-on-one attack from both Eagle and Riley, no referee. But Caleb Riley and Aaron Eagle are gonna work together here to take this MPX Championship away from the Tommy Becker. The winner of the 2024 Texas Rumble is about to fulfill his destiny. Eagle looking for a superplex. Becker. Still trying to fight him off, headbutt sends Eagle down. 
Well, now Riley looking to his hero, like, what should I do? I don't know. Look, Caleb Riley right there, stepping into action now. Gonna try to, to finish what Eagle started. There's Riley with the forearms to the back of Becker, climbing up top. As Eagle now looks on at his sidekick. And now Becker from the top turnbuckle. Well, Becker, what, oh, no, wait Becker a second. suplex Riley out to the floor. But here comes Eagle. And now Eagle almost directing his dim-witted sidekick. Dim-witted? He's got, he's got his own sidekick on his shoulders. What the hell is he, well, that's, what's he doing? Now he's a lot taller. And now oh. the forearm just knocking Riley off the shoulders of the hero of the people. But Caleb Riley crashing down hard. Eagle checking on his sidekick. Referee Travis Trueborn still down somewhere on the outside. Now, Eagle fighting back now, swing and a miss. Becker, Becker reverse slam blade. Face first goes Eagle in the mat. Yeah, Becker landing here and Eagle there. And now Becker going back to what he originally had planned here as he heads to the top rope. Frog splash on Eagle. Atlanta. Becker could retain still him. There's no, no referee. referee. There's still no. Wait a minute. Here comes referee Cedric Scott. One, two, the oh. ball. That's two. I'm sorry. With Trueborn still down, we finally got a new referee. I thought all the other referees went home, but no. Referee Cedric Scott coming in. But still, not enough for Becker to get the win after that frog splash. Eagle just able to kick out. He's looking back towards that ankle that he's already weakened up so much from that last ankle lock. The Eagle shoving him back first oh, into, into that, that steel. steel. Into the steel that, where that turnbuckle pad used to be. I forgot about that, and now Eagle capitalizing even more. We're going to see a cancellation on Becker. Oh, that's going to be it. That's got to be it. Eagle looking to be a two-time MPX champion right here. Two. No. Oh. No. Becker got the shoulder up. Is still in it. I don't know how after that steal right to the back into that cancellation. And Eagle cannot believe it. That should have been more than enough. Now here an Eagle looking around. And he's got his, his side kicks down. He's got a new referee. The Eagle. Oh, wait a second. They have to What's go he back doing? to the drawing board. He'll put his hands on the referee. Oh, what a clothesline! He just closed on the ref! Well, he wasn't the one aside in this match anyway. Damn him! And now we got two referees down. And Aaron Eagle gonna have to dispose of referee Cedric Scott. Just depositing Cedric Scott to the outside. Trueborn down on one side. Cedric Scott down on the other. Well, clearly Eagle wasn't satisfied with his counting. Where's the third referee? I know we got one more around here somewhere. He's probably afraid to go out after watching what Eagle just did. Now Aaron Eagle. Does Aaron Eagle not realize, Tyler, he can't win the MPX title without a referee in the ring? Well, I mean, I'm sure that he knows that. He just wants a referee that he's happy with. And he pulls the MPX champion back up. Maybe looking for another cancellation. And look, referee Travis Trueborn, the original ref, back inside his eagle, looking for another cancellation on Becker. Becker with the right hands. Becker trying to fight his way free. Got him back into the corner. And Becker on that turnbuckle. Okay. Eagle on his feet, watch out for the MPX champion. Moves on nobody oh. home. And Aaron Eagle able to move out of the way. The Tommy Becker crashes and burns on that moonsault attempt. And now, it's good. Oh, I, I think it's time uh, maybe for a cancel leaf. Aaron Eagle looking for the Texas cancel leaf. Looking to make Tommy Becker tap out. Oh, turns him over. Texas cancel leaf in from the hero of the people. Tyler, I couldn't tell you the last time we've seen the Tommy Becker actually tap out, but could we see it here tonight at Destiny? I think you're about to see it. 
Referee Travis Ruboy back in place, right there in position to see. Oh no, well, Bender's got the angle. Oh no, wait, wait a minute. He's got the angle. He does, he's the got left the angle of Eagle. He's back in the angle lock. Becker somehow from the cancel leaf into the angle lock. And Caleb Riley is still down. No help for Eagle this time. Barrett Eagle reaching out for that rope. Oh, Becker pulls he it back. He the leg. Again, this angle lock is locked in. Is Eagle going to tap? He's in excruciating pain. Wow. Eagle taps. Eagle taps. Becker retains. Here is your winner by submission. Champion. And the obstacles were all there in front of the MPX champion. But somehow, the Tommy Becker was able to get up and over and around each and every one of them. And as unbelievable as it may seem to me, he's walking out of here still with that MPX championship around his waist. What an ending to the biggest show in the history of this company. Congratulations to the Tommy Becker on still being the MPX champion. Addicts, make sure you're back here with us next week, each and every week, at our usual spot, 510 Harwood Road, Bedford, Texas, for more MPX action. We can't thank you enough for being here with us and supporting us on this fantastic and amazing night. For Tyler Foster, I'm Cody Cox. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.